have your money, Jubal. I followed you too far not to. And you'll have to kill me first. Then I'll kill you. <laughs> what I started. Dead. Your arm's cut. You were to have it took care of. Tomorrow will be time enough. By noon tomorrow, we'll be at Big Valley. And Oak Meadows. Yes, sir. Oak meadows. On the edge of the Barkley land. Just waiting for us. Like I told you it would be. we hope to accomplish this day. I've had my assistants prepare a complete and documented presentation for your examination and evaluation. Now, this first document contains the total amount of the Valley's production for the last two years. Rather an impressive undertaking. Thank you. Now, these are the latest census figures, which break down to show the total amount of the Valley's contribution to the state's consumption of food, timber, leather goods. Mr. Chairman, May I ask that you direct Mr. Barkley to get to his point? He's trying to do just that, but you keep interrupting. You're out of order, young man. Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, my brother is unfamiliar. Go on with the issue, Mr. Barkley. Now, these are the projected figures of the Valley's potential production, if a dam were to be constructed in the area that we have suggested. A dam, gentlemen would mean the influx of new businesses that would affect the entire economy of this West Coast. Gentlemen, the potential that lies there in that valley is limitless. It would seem young Mr. Barkley has inherited some of his father's political ambitions. I was not aware that the state's general well-being was a political issue. Or could it be that it's the finance committeeman's instructions to make it one? It is political to this point, Mr. Chairman. My party made a promise to the people at the last election, a promise to watch very closely state expenditures. We intend to keep that promise. The majority party's desire to honor a campaign commitment is most commendable. However, if I can point out a way that that promise can be kept and at the same time the dam can be constructed, would the chairman consider keeping this hearing open for a time longer? Twenty-six seconds. You're almost as good. What do you mean, almost? Nick would have beaten you by a good three seconds. Oh, you think so, huh? Yes, I do. Sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Morning. Howdy. I can see I'm on Barkley range. 
You both have Tom Barkley's mark. Where's the All River Cypher at? My father's dead. Tom's dead? Six years ago. Who are you? Who'd you say you were? Ma, she ain't dead, too. She's at the house. My God, Tom's dead. I'm Chad. He's Jubal Tanner, my gramps. And we come a long way. Yeah, where from? Camino, Calaveras, and a few other dozen gold camps thrown in between. Gramps got cut. His arm needs looking to. All this fuss over a little scratch. Jubal? Victoria. Jubal, how wonderful to see you. Oh. The years have been good to you, as it was meant to be. Well, we thought about you so much. I'm sorry about Tom. He would love to have seen you. And this is? My son Richard's boy. Richard? Is he with you? No. He and Chad's ma died of the fever when Chad was a baby. Chad. I think Chad could do with some hot food. Am I right? Gramps? You're with the closest thing to a family you got, boy. If you're hungry, say so. I'm hungry. Well, you get a bath first. Come on. You'll find some clothes for him in the trunk in the spare room. Mr. Tanner's arm needs to be bandaged. Oh. What happened? Uh, nothing. I got in a little scrape. Let me fix it. Thirty years. Where has it all gone to? Uh, some have been into this ranch. This house. Those two fine young ones of yours. There are two more. What about you? Chad's all. I never married again. Besides Margaret, there was only one other worth marrying. My best friend had done that. Why didn't you keep in touch? I did, in a way. I heard of some of your doings. Tom's success here. Who'd have thought? When the four of us came through here 30-odd years ago, who'd have thought that one day it would all be his? Tom did, remember? Yeah, he did that. And he said there would always be one particular piece of land for you. The piece of land he knew you would want. That's right. He put it in writing. Got it in these here letters. Why didn't you just come and take it? Uh, that's why I'm here now. Or not to take it. I mean to buy it. Oh, Jubal, that land is yours. No. Everything I got, I earned. I wouldn't be happy with it otherwise. I wrote to Tom, and I asked him to set a fair price. At first, he wouldn't. But finally, he agreed on a, on an honest sum. There's the price. Six thousand. I added a thousand to it, because I knew the land would be worth more. That's where my 30 years went. Jubal, please. No. This land's got to be bought and paid for. You paid for the land a long time ago. No. Now I pay for it. That's the way I want it. Now Oak Meadows is mine. Oak Meadows has always been yours. Oak Meadows! That's what Jared said. We would make Oak Meadows available for the dam site. Now, it's as good, if not better, than any place that's been suggested up till now. How did he swing it? By offering the land at 50 cents an acre a quarter of its value, and by showing them all they have to do is fill that narrow gorge at the south end of Oak Meadows, and we've got a dam! Yay! Hey, Nick, when are they going to do it? Well, a special committee is going over coldest construction plans right now, and we should get the good word any day. <laughs> Place feels better than I do right now. Except maybe me. 
No, no, no. There's no sense in that at all. Nick, please lower your voice. I've heard the people talk of a dam in this valley since I was a kid. It will just have to go somewhere else. It'll be Oak Meadows or not at all for a Oak long time. Oak Meadows belongs to Jubal Tanner, and I doubt very much if he will sell. We'll see to your Jubal Tanner. Nicholas, I forbid you. I don't want you or anyone else putting pressure on Jubal to sell. Oh, Mother, you won't get any pressure from me. I'll not do any of the pressing, I promise you that. But when the people in this valley hear that they've lost their dam, your friend Jubal Tanner will learn the real meaning of the word pressure. It's been a night lonely. I'm right sorry. Never figured it'd take me 30 years to... It's all there now. The richest boy with me. Fine young man. His ma's kin tried to take him when she and Richard passed. Slight chance. We're gonna build a cabin up yonder ways. But I'll come see you every day. It's a promise. I miss you as much as the day I put you in there. A hollowness came over me that I never did feel. Sorry it's grown over. Tom used to keep it up. Jubal, this is the first time since... Well, it's the first time I've been back to this part of Oak Meadows. All these years. Well, you'll come by more often now. I mean, we'll be dividing the visit between here and, and your place. But, Jubal... exactly the news the whole valley is hoping to hear. It's thrown back in your teeth, and you stand there as calm as a mule chewing on summer grass. What would you like me to do? You have worked harder to get that dam put in than anybody else. That's true. And then get fired up. Show me something, anything. Just show me you're alive, will you? Uh, aren't you fired up enough for both of us? She's like talking to a stone wall. And what do you propose, busting through that stone wall? Oh, come on now, Jared. I've known you to ram your head once or twice. And sometimes it's better to go around. You just try going around the people in this valley when they hear they've lost their dam. Nick, 
Now, I'm sure when Mother and Mr. Tanner are presented with the facts in an unemotional way, the plans for the dam will go ahead. They won't if Oak Meadows is the only answer. How was your trip? The trip was quiet. Things changed a little when I got here. How about some sherry? Thank you. I meant what I just said. Well, now, I'm sure there's more than one answer if we look for it. Either kick him out or get him another piece of land. We'll do neither one. Jubal Tanner is a very old and a very dear friend. And you have some very old and very dear friends here, too, Mother. Now, Mother, I'm sure whatever reason you have, it's a good one. But you have to consider the fact it'll be affecting hundreds of others. Your father promised Jubal that land long before any of you were born. And I'd be the first to do what father wanted. But wouldn't he have wanted the dam, too? So do I. But we don't own the land. The deed hasn't been signed yet. Since when does a Barclay need his signature to make his word good? Some broken down old nobody drifts in here looking for something. Easy now. I drifted in here six months ago looking for something. That was different. Was it? I was looking for what I believed was mine. A place to set some roots down. And that old man, he's looking for the same thing. I just can't see how I can argue against it. Couldn't we at least offer him another section of land? Your father and I helped him bury his wife at Oak Meadows. What other section would you suggest? Right here, we'll have a big window. And we'll sit here, and we'll look the whole thing over. And over there, we'll have a fireplace big enough to burn a half a tree. Gosh, Gramps. Sure sounds good. When are we going to build it? Oh, I figure sometime this week when we get enough lumber up here from town. A real house with more than one room. That's what we'll have. And glass in the windows? And wood on the floor. And doors that close instead of a hanging blanket. And ticking to sleep on instead of a lot of flea-bitten old fur. Yeah. And plenty of water to bathe in. Yeah, and we'll have. You're set up here for quite a time. Well, for long enough. Well, this is a squatter country, old time. I'm afraid you're going to have to clear out. Well, hold on. I'm speaking for the owners. This is my land, bought and paid for. Well, I don't know who sold it to you, but I guarantee you've been taken. Well, I got no idea what that means, and I ain't sure I care. It means this whole area is going to be flooded soon. It means there's going to be a dam built up here. Gramps! Don't you fret, boy. We'll see about ownership. Mr. One of Us is in for a powerful surprise. Jared, I was just on my way over to see you and I noticed this campsite here. What's he been saying? Some nonsense about a dam. Don't worry about a thing. I ain't worried. Jared, what is this? That's my oldest son, Jared. Jared. You know what this old man just told me? I know all about it, Len. And? He purchased Oak Meadows from my mother yesterday. Well, then you buy it back. Jared, it's official. The committee approved the plans. I've got the go-ahead to start construction. I'd appreciate being let in on what this talk of a dam means. Well, I'll tell you one thing, old-timer. It means trouble if this isn't straightened out. Now, that's no threat. It's just a statement of fact. See, there are a lot of people with a stake in this. A lot of people who gave their nickels and dimes and dollars to pay for the lobbying done in Sacramento. Jared, you're the one who wanted all this. You're the one who's handled the whole thing so far. Now, what are you gonna do?
work for I don't know how many in building it, then there'll be new farmland and more people to work that land. And it'll mean new trade for the store owners in Stockton and new businesses in the valley. It all adds up to a lot of people, Jubal, and a lot of opportunities I believe they have a right to. Jared, I'm 68. And the better part of my life on this earth, I worked for one thing. One thing, mind you. Long time ago, I took a frail, pretty little girl from a safe place, and I brought her out here. I promised her a home of her own. When she died, I promised her something else. I promised her the land she was buried in. Yesterday, I kept that promise. Now, that might mean nothing to some. All them years, I promised to a dead person. Fair enough. You was talking about rights. The rights of all them people. I figure each by themselves are only one. Just like I'm only one. And I got rights. And I own this land. And by God, I'm going to keep it. Well, I guess that's about as simple as it can be put. And there it's going to sit, and you're going to do nothing about it? No, I'm still going to try everything I know to get him to change his mind. Well, you better succeed, because this whole valley isn't going to lose out on account of one stubborn old man. You know that. Jared, that, uh, that stubborn old man was once a very young, very determined young man who was very much in love. Believe me, he is not going to change his mind. You could help me. No. No, I couldn't. Looks like the hen party broke up early. Still going on, for all I know. Oh? You should have heard what Flora Benson had to say about Oak Meadows. Flora Benson? The Benson Timber family. Her company would supply all the lumber if the dam were built. Flora, is she the one with the reddish hair, let alone the plump side? Yes. <laughs> She's been giving you a hard time. You should hear some of the things she said about Mother. Oh, hon, just consider the source. I did more than that. I told her off. As only you can. Heath. Are you as confused as I am? Whether to side with Mother and Tanner or Jared and Nick and the rest of the valley. There's a lot of good argument to both sides. Well, then you haven't decided either. I have. Then will you help me decide? My feelings are based on a lot of things that have only to do with me. Father, whatever you decide, it's not going to affect the trial. What trial? The trial of the whole Barkley family. The verdict will be in sometime later today. What does that mean? It means that Jared is planning to sign over the deed to Jubal Tanner later this afternoon. And I'm going to go on over there and try to talk some sense into him before it's too late. You want to come along? Yeah, I'd kind of like to see how the trial comes out. Little sister, I'm sorry I can't help you decide. But whichever road you choose to travel, don't you think you could get there on your own? Before I sign that deed, Jubal, I'd like to point something out to you. The Barclays have kind of led things in the valley ever since Father stood up against the railroad people. Now we find ourselves in the position of standing in the way of progress. They killed your daddy those hired guns to the railroad. That's right. Of course, he stood 
for something that he believed was right. It didn't matter that he was standing against the railroads, who was bringing in progress. Jubu, the railroads were trying to take over ranch lands that had been worked for years. Oak Meadows hasn't been worked for years, but it's been worked for for years. You should have been a lawyer, Jubal. Son, it's just that a big old oak tree don't look the same to a ground squirrel as it does to a hoot owl. That's a fine analogy. Which one am I? Nothing personal. The people will never stop trying to get you out. I don't reckon they will. The majority usually rules. That's too bad. Because being the majority don't make it right. Jared, don't do it. You can't turn against the people in this valley. I'm not turning against anyone. That's exactly what you're doing if you sign that deed. When I sign this deed, I'll be honoring an agreement made by Mother. Oh, now, don't throw it all up to Mother. Nick. Now, why don't you and Heath go buy yourself a beer? I don't Take want a beer. beer. He's been sitting in one place too long. No, now, listen to me, Buy him a sarsaparilla. Listen, Jared, I got just as much to say about this as anybody else. Nick, do you think this is easy for me? Do you think I like seeing all that work go for nothing? It's just that I'm trying to be a hoot owl and a ground squirrel at the same time. And I guarantee you it's not easy. I guess that's supposed to mean something. All of a sudden, I've got a thirst. Well, I haven't. What do you say, boy, a big sarsaparilla? Yes, sir. If father were alive, I know what he'd say. And do. in the mining camp, he knows what a saloon looks like. I've got more than a few growlers for the miners. Penny a bucket. Well, you know, I used to make money the same way when I was a kid. Yeah. Did you ever lick the foam off the top of a can? Just once. Graham smelled it in my breath. Never tasted it since. Did you ever sneak rides on the cars down into the deep mines? Didn't Angel's camp. How are you two cut up old times? I'm get myself a beer. And a big sarsaparilla. And a big sarsaparilla. Two beers and a large sarsaparilla. You minding the kid while the old man gets Oak Meadows deeded over? I'm pulling your fangs, Dutton. For the first time in my life, I'm on your side. The rest of the Barclays don't seem to be. For sure, the old lady ain't. You shut your mouth, or I won't be either. Barkley, where will you be if somebody tries persuading the old man? Crowell, even you wouldn't go after an old man and a kid. I used to take a big old fishnet put the dirty clothes in, and throw it all on the stream. You know, a Paiute Indian taught me that. Nick, he used to make money washing the miners' clothes, same as I did. Sounds like fun. It's fun talking about it. Wasn't much fun doing it. No, it sure wasn't. That water got mighty cold, didn't it? The worst time was when it rained. In the camp streets turned the mud clean up to your knees. And it'd slide into the tents and get into the blankets and everything. Boy, oh boy, sure made sleeping it being uncomfortable. You lived all the time with your grandfather, boy. As long as I can remember. Uh, wasn't there any other uh, kin that you stayed with? Got an uncle in Denver. But I'd never leave Gramps. Tough things was at times. Oak medals always seemed a long ways off. Those times I thought I'd never see it. But Gramps said we would. I'm sure sorry for what it's costing everybody. But you can't say it's wrong I haven't it. You see some right to that, don't you, Mr. Buckley? How come he doesn't talk like other boys his age? He grew up fast in a mining camp, Nick. Uh -huh. Jubal, let me get you a chair. Thank you, son. You can still make a fair profit if you sell right now, old man. Appreciate your offer. It ain't no offer, it's a warning. A damn going in means work. No sourdough looking for a place for his bones to rot is going to take no jobs away from us. Is this a private finger-jabbing game, or can anybody play? The lines are drawn mighty fast. And you're pulling them pretty tight, Dutton. 
I'll take the opposite side of this sucker any time. Right now. Get him. Fun, sir. Mm -hmm. Clear out! Now, there are two sides of the story. There sure are. And I never thought I'd see a Barkley on the side which was against bringing water into this valley. Oh, now, well... Now, get! Or I'll have you all arrested for disturbing the peace. You can take them two with you. Come on, Jewel. Come on. sleep. No. When your father was troubled over something, he used to look for answers this way, too. I could use some answers. Why is it, when we grow up, we hold back instead of coming right out and asking, like you did when you were a little boy? Whatever reasons you have for backing Jubal Tanner are your own. I have two reasons. Len Calder is going to press for a suit of eminent domain. I presumed he would. I'm not sure I'm going to oppose him. If you were sure, would you be down here now staring into the fire? You know what happened to Nick and Heath in town today? Yes, I know, but that isn't what's bothering you. No. No, the pettiness I can cope with. But I can't ignore the reason for it. Your friend Jubal has set himself up against the majority. But where there is one, there is a majority of one. And when the rights of the majority take away from the rights of the one, then the many will themselves suffer. The road. Isn't that the intent of the law? The protection of the individual? Like Jubal Tanner. And your father. No one could take away from him what was his. Not even the railroad who killed him. There are some who say your father's principles killed him. Well, he was a man who would rather die for a principle than live without one. Lovely lady. I think maybe I can sleep now. I told you I had two reasons for backing Jubal. And I told you whatever reasons you had were your own. Yes, but I want you to know the other one now. A long time ago, when I first married your father, Jubal Tanner married my best friend, Margaret Putman. We came west through the valley together. There was a fire, a fire all around us. Your father was off hunting. Jubal, Margaret, and their son were riding in the wagon. I was riding horseback. When I was thrown, I cried out. Jubal stopped and ran back to help me. The team bolted and... 
Margaret was killed when the wagon overturned. We buried her in Oak Meadows. And I've never forgotten or forgiven myself because I should be the one buried there. Because of him, I wasn't. Because of him, you, Nick, Eugene, Audra. That's why, in spite of everything, he must keep Oak Meadows. One more time, one of us sly digs out of Florida. Oh, I don't mean Perkins. Just kind you can expect it. Do you know who just cut me colder than a fish? Who? Lucy Collier. I was just dancing with her last week at Otto Miller's barn raising. A lot can happen in a week. Like I didn't know. Seems to me you're changing your mind about all this. Huh? Snubs and sly cracks and nothing compared to what it's going to be before long. Out of blazes with them. Slapping in my stomach. You know how you feel. Like you gotta breathe long and deep or you'll bust. Yeah. How much longer it's gonna take, Gramps? Oh, at the rate we're going or not. Pack up and go back where you come from, mister. The next time we won't pull it down, we'll burn it down. Kind of got the feeling that maybe that old man thinks we didn't mean it, what we told him last night? The looks of them supplies and his going into Andy's place here. Seems to me he aims to make us prove it. 
I ain't that kind of foolish, old man. You might still could get a good price. You're wasting your breath. You may bury me on that land, but you'll never drive me from it. All right. That's the way you want it? came last night. Where's your grandfather? In town. Be back directly. He's all right. Yes, ma'am. A little mad, but he's sure all right. Did you get a good look at those men? Yes, sir. They're the ones your brother's tangled with in the saloon. You're sure? I'm sure. Me and Gramps were standing just over there. Well, I'm glad they didn't hurt you. Just frightened you. You had callers. Well, I'll greet them a little more personal the next time. That's not the answer, Jubal. It's one they'll remember, though. How many of them were there? Nine, ten. And you're going to try and stand them off alone? Well, I ain't going to crawl. What about Chad? Victoria, I was hoping he could stay with you for a few days. I'm staying here. You're going to do as I tell you, boy. I've been a part of it all till now. You heard your grandfather. Well, if there's going to be more trouble, I guess you'll need some help. Help? What in blazes do you want me to do? I can't be out there guarding him every night. Dutton and the others will be back. I talked to Dutton, he denies it. He's lying and you know it. Equal protection under the law, Sheriff. Protect Jubal Tanner in spite of your personal feelings. It's your duty. Don't tell me my duty. I'm telling you to order Dutton and the others to stay out of Oak Meadows or deputize enough men to see that there's no more trouble there. I can't. Can't or won't? Besides the Barclays, you name me one person who'll stand up for that old man. In this whole valley, you name me one. Fred, they destroyed his house last night. Maybe next time they'll kill him. Is that the way you want it handled? Of course not. I'm against violence, the same as you. Then let the people know that. But there's going to be violence. As sure as I'm standing here, there's going to be violence unless that old man settles somewhere else. And if he doesn't, I think they're going to kill him. No, I don't think they are. Len, you know they are. We played poker together too many years. I can read you like a book. I've got no more to say, Jared. If anyone dies, you'll have had a hand in it. I have no part in any of it. You can't tie me into a thing. They'd listen to you. You and all the others who've turned their back on me, they'll all have had a hand in it. You'll not lay it on my doorstep, Jared. Then whose blame is it when a handful of perennial troublemakers act as spokesmen for the entire valley? Not the entire valley. I couldn't find one who would stand with us. But it's been three days. Maybe they've decided to let Jubal alone after all. No, they figured to strike sooner or later. Sooner or later. In the meantime, there's all kind of land he can have instead. Who said anything about land? Isn't that what this is all about? No, Brother Nick, it isn't. Nicholas, what if this particular piece of land had a very particular meaning to someone close to you? It all depends on what that meaning was. If land weren't the issue, but it were a matter of personal rights, and standing on those rights, no matter how unpopular they may be, is 100% within the law. Well, I'd say... Uh... One man's personal rights standing alone are just as important as one man's personal rights standing with a crowd. I guess it sometimes takes a while, but eventually the Barclays get around to seeing eye to eye with one another. you back at the house where you belong? I've been here every night since you were. You have? Yes, sir. I've been hiding in that tree top yonder. Get down behind that wheel where I can see you. And 
lie flat. Jared Barkley. We didn't figure on you being in on this, Barkley. And it, brothers. So it won't be just trying to scare off one old man. Take your men and go, Dutton. You're breaking the law. We'll go when he goes. Nobody's going to drive me off this land. Jubal. Jubal, get back. out. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jared. I'm really sorry. You're a little late, Sheriff. much better. Just try not to keep tugging at it. I'll try. And tell your uncle to write us that you arrived safely. Yes, ma'am. How about an apple, Chad? Well, everything's in order. Chad, here's your train ticket. And here's a bank draft in your name for all the money your grandfather saved for that land. Thank you, sir. You figure the dam will go in now? Yep, I think so. And you know, Chad, they held a special council meeting in town today. And everyone, the sheriff and even Len Colder, wants you to know how sorry they feel. That's just words. No, more than just words. They want your permission to name it the Jubal Tanner Dam. I don't know. Chad. Chad, you can go on being bitter about what happened. But that's not the way he would have wanted it. I know that for a fact. The Jubal Tanner Dan. You tell him fine. But if it has his name, it better be the best dam in the whole world. <laughs> Boy, you don't talk or act like any kid I ever met. Sure does. Come on, we'll miss your train. Hey, what time Why is this you train? Would you like to drive this evening? Hey! My stuff! Come on, boy.
going through town. I better send a couple men with you. If anyone wants to take a shot at me, a couple of men more or less won't stop them. Open the gate. trouble like this at the mine before. How deeply involved are we? Well, not to get hurt. 10,000 shares. Well, then why don't we sell out? Because since the strike, we wouldn't be able to get anywhere near their market value. If the governor had any guts, he'd move the troops in up there. Now, wait a minute. They're destroying private property. Troops aren't the answer. Well, what is the answer? Nick, why don't you ride up there as soon as possible and find out what it's all about? Tomorrow morning. Better let me. Sounds like my kind of job. Well, what makes you say that? Oh, I've seen the elephant and heard the owl, brother. You haven't. Worked in the mines, remember? I'll leave in the morning, Jared. Oh, now, wait a minute. Heath is right. Nick, what do you say? Well, I got other things to do. All right, then that settles it. Heath, when you get up there, talk to Colin Murdoch. He's been superintendent of the mines since it opened. He'll be able to give you a good picture of what's going on. Right. And Heath, remember, you'll be representing management. And management seems to be a walking target right now. You watch yourself. Yeah. to eat in a room for the night. I'm closed. You don't look closed. Now, I've ridden a long stretch. And I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty. Now, when a man feels like that, he, uh, he gets irritable. Gets annoyed at little things. 
I don't want no trouble, mister. No trouble. Just a room, a drink, and something to eat. Make it two, Newton. Shut up. Gentlemen won't mind buying a lady a drink. Beat it. Oh, let a girl make a rent, will you, Newton? Well, I can't feed you. There's nothing prepared in the house. Mm. He lies in his teeth. There's a whole leg of cold mutton lying in his cooler. I told you to shut your mouth. Now I'll shut it free. You stand back, you dirty man. I'll girl, girl, blame put, you. Put it down, dear girl. It's, your, it's you. the only decent drop in the house. Let's have the mutton. Fine thing a man can't call his house his own. Who asked you to butt in? I can fight my own battles. Sure you can. Another second I'd had that big slob laid out with the whiskey and glass oozing out of his ears. Well, now you heard what the man said. You wouldn't want to waste the last decent drop of whiskey in the house now, would you? Hey, you talk good sense. To your health. And yours. Are you planning to spend the night? Planning on it. We asked Newton for the key to number eight. It's the best room in the house. I know for a fact the sheets was changed only a week ago. He'd hardly been slept in since. You don't let him tell you there isn't any room. Now, you're not going to spend the night. Now, why can't he spend the night? I don't want any trouble in my place. You wait till himself hears about this. Ah, the back of me front to himself and you too. Look, you don't want to spend a night in a place like this. I own it, and I wouldn't stay here if I had any choice in the matter. Look, the beds are hard, and the bugs, you know. Oh, terrible bugs. Big enough to throw a man out in the street and leave him there to be eaten at the leisure. Let's have a key. It's only nine miles down the road to Sonora. Oh, it's a grand town, a grand town, with a decent hotel. And girls. Ah, oh, they got the finest bits of fluff in the mother load country down there in Sonora. Number eight key. I'll eat in my room. You heard what I said to him. I tried to make him move on, didn't I? Well, didn't I? Surprise, surprise. What are you doing here? Well, I thought you might like a nightcap. So I brought up the bottle. That's all? What's your name? Bridie. Bridie what? Bridie Henry, honey. Go ahead, help yourself. How old are you, Bridie? Oh, no. I didn't come up to give you a pedigree. Well, I suppose not. Eighteen? Nineteen? Why, aren't you gonna drink with me? How much do you make off a bottle, Brady? Oh, you're a wise one. I make a dollar. Ten. What's it for? Information. That's a dirty word around here. What are you, a company spy? Nope. That's what they think downstairs. Why? Well, you're a stranger. If I was to tell them you was asking for information, they'd have you dead as a mackerel before the night was out. Will you tell them? Or should I? They ain't paying me nothing. Who's himself? 
You can put your money away. I'm the sole support of my old father, and I can't afford to be killed. What does uh, $20 mean to you, Bridie? The rent paid, food in the house. And no need to be doing this for at least a month. Who's himself? Odul. Odul. Can you pass the word to him that I'd like to see him? What for? Just get word to him. What is that all you want? That's all, Brady. Oh, you're a strange one. I suppose a gentleman like yourself can't be bothered with the likes of me. Well, you ain't so much. I hope O'Doul cuts your heart out. Murdoch, I am Heath Barkley from Stockton. Oh, Mr. Barkley. Always a pleasure to see one of the family up here. Sit down, sir. Thank you. What can I do for you? It's about the troubles you've had up here. Now, the work of a few vicious malcontents. You've been shut down for weeks. I know, Mr. Barkley. But I've been in constant communication with Mr. Hummel since he took over management of the company. We've been working on the problem. Have you tried talking to the men? Well, there's no talking to them. They're demanding the sky. New housing, elimination of the company store. Things that have nothing to do with reasonable requests. Is that why they went on strike? Well, I told Mr. Hummel it wasn't the right time to cut wages. Is that why they went on strike? Because you cut wages? Why? This is a producing mine. There's ore in sight for another 10 years. And then what? A dead hole in the ground with nothing in it? Mr. Barkley, every penny I have in the world is tied up in 5,000 shares of Barkley Sierra. Every penny. I deserve to get whatever profit I can. And what about the people who work for you in that mine? Don't expect me to show any feelings for the murderers who gave me this. Then what about your own interests? Your shares are losing value while that mine is shut down. I have complete confidence in the company management. In fact, I've given Mr. Hummel my proxy to vote my shares. He assures me the mine will be open in a week. How? The only way you'll open that mine is by using strike breakers. Is that what you're up to? Mr. Hummel feels it's the only way. He assures me the Chinese are a docile and industrious people who will work cheaply. You're bringing in Chinese. You do that and you'll pull the cork on more trouble than you or Mr. Hummel can handle. Good day, Mr. Murdoch. <laughs> you that was looking for me. You need that thing? When a man's on the run, 
You know how it is. It's been a long time, Heath. Since we worked in the mines, what are you doing up here? Organizing. The strike? Mm hmm. Do you have a drink about the place? Sure. What's it all about, Dion? The strike? Well, take a look around. The curse of the Irish. Them that don't die of the drink perish of religious melancholia. Or starvation. Or get shot to death. Or a hundred other ways to squeeze the life out of a man. The sad people, the Irish. What are you doing in Lonesome? Looking for answers to the strike. What's your interest? I represent the Barclay family. Tom Barclay turned out to be my father. Did he now? Didn't you stop to think there might be some risk in coming here? The bosses aren't popular in Lonesome, you know. I'm no boss. No. Of course you're not. Just a drop, please. No man that worked in the mines could become a boss. It takes a fine gentleman who's never raised a callus to work men until they drop. And cheat them in the company stars and starve their women and children. Get out the soapbox, O'Doul. That isn't true. Have you gone blind? Can't you see what's around you? Ah, oh, you've changed. The Heath I used to know would have been right out on the lines with us. And I would be out on the lines with you if you were going about it the right way. And we are going about it right. We're asking for decent wages, an end to company stores, safe working conditions. And how are you asking? With bombings and murder from ambush? Man, darling, it's the war we're in. You can't win that kind of war. Dion, listen to me. Get your people together. Form a committee to meet with the company management to discuss your differences in an orderly manner. No. Why? It's not the answer. Let me talk to your people. Let them decide if it's the right way. I'll do the deciding for him. Well... That was Grand Taste and Whiskey. I believe in you now. Are we still friends? Now, that's a fine question to ask a man. Of course we are. But I wouldn't be speaking for others in the camp. The Barclays aren't popular, you know. If I were you, I'd leave town in a quiet kind of a way. Within an hour or two. No later than that. Killing of them, let me be the one to do it. And I'll burn a thousand candles for the sake of your soul when they finally catch you and swing you off. Shut up with your talk about swinging. There'll be a meeting of the organization tonight. Tell the boys we may have some business to do. Go on. Oh, little brother Barkley, a little. Good. 
I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I may. Make it brief, brother. Time and the tides of opportunity wait for no man. Ah, yes. What do you want to talk about? Barclay Sierra. I'm a very busy man, Brother Barclay. Maybe you better come around to the office later in the week. Now, Uncle Samuel. Right now. 300 Mirage Silver. Well, what about 45 it? 45 and a quarter. I understand you're bringing in Chinese strike breakers. You heard that, did you? Yeah. My brother's in lonesome. He wired me about your plans. Now you know you can't get away with a thing like that, Uncle Samuel. You bring in 500 Chinese laborers on Wednesday, and by Thursday, they're scattered all the way from Camp Lonesome to the Barbary Coast. Well, it's not my doing. It's the decision of the board of directors. Oh, come now, Uncle Samuel. You control that board, and we both know it. All right. The shareholders entrusted me with management of the property. To my mind, that means making profits. Making profits means getting the ore out of the mine at the least cost. And Chinese labor isn't one-third as dear as what we've been paying. Why, you slippery old thief. I almost believe you started that strike just so you could bring in cheap labor. If you see any loose Barclay Sierra stock, Brother Barclay, snap it up. It's a good investment for the future. Gently, Brother Barclay, gently. Uncle Samuel, you just started yourself a little war. And before it's over, I'm going to collect that greasy old hide of yours and have it stuffed. 200 grand copper, eight and a half. Don't make a sound or we're both dead. Well, what's wrong? Get up and get dressed. They're coming for you. Who's coming? The Molly Maguires. Will you get them over? Molly Maguires, are you? Well, you never mind the questions. Do you want to kill us both? Why? Oh. You and your modesty. you know about this? I heard them talking. They think it's a grand thing to hang up Barkley. Why are you warning me? For the $20 that will keep me out of the saloon for a month. If we get out of this, you'll never be in that saloon again, I'll tell you that. I mean it. For the sake of the comfort it would bring me, Mr. Barkley, would you kiss me once? No. On the lips. Daughter, not to bring her low saloon friends under the roof of my house. Mr. Barclay, tell my father what happened. The Mollies were after me. Your daughter helped me. Barclay, is it? Oh, if I had me legs, I'd be out of the boys hunting you down. Father, please tell my please daughter now. if she's anything to say to me to speak to you. What is this? My father won't speak to me. He uh, doesn't care for the way I'd put food in his belly and a roof over his head. I never asked for a charity. He'd rather I let him starve than me work in a saloon and him helpless as he is. Thank God her mother died before she brought this shame on us. Oh, and I wish you'd die. Favor me! Stay here where I keep my eyes on you. Get back there! You try that and I'll howl so loud every Molly and Camp will be in here before you can say Jack Robinson. Now you sit down over there. Suppose you think I'm a hard man. I think you're a fool. Oh, if I had me legs, you'd sing a different tune, me pile. Do you wonder where my legs went? Down in the mine, that's where, when the rotten timber collapsed. I should have died down there, and I would have, if it hadn't been for the hate that kept me alive. Hate for the lion mouth of him that made the lion promises that brought us here and put my daughter in the saloon to earn the bitter bread to keep me alive. Ah, it came. 
keeps me alive to curse the dirty name of Tom Barkley and all that come after him. I don't know anything about Tom Barkley's promises. Oh, well, we've got a long night ahead of us. I'll tell you the promises he made. And then you go back to your Barclays and tell them why we spit on their name here in Lonesome Camp. Samuel, what brings you out so late? Dickery. Time doesn't mean much when a man's in the mood to dicker. Dickering, huh? What do you got? Oh, I've got something. What have you got? I never touch it. Oh? Well, then. How about a petition signed on behalf of the minority shareholders enjoining present management from conducting any further company business? Sit down, Uncle Samuel. Pending a full stockholders meeting. It'll be filed, uh, let's see. Oh. Tomorrow. Hmm. Well, it isn't much. Oh? Well, then why are you dickering? Because you can be a nuisance, Brother Barkley, a tarnation nuisance. So I'm making you an offer. $333,000 for your holdings in Barkley Sierra. That's the market price before the stock went down. Now, oh, there's a handsome offer, if I say so myself. What if I say no? <laughs> then you'd be a tarnation fool. Besides, you've got no right to say no. That's a Barclay family holding. You better talk it over between you before you say anything. All things considered, Hummel has made us a pretty fair offer. We could get out of Barclay Sierra without losing any skin. You mean we'll get all our money back? Yep. And if we don't accept? Well, then we're in for a rather expensive fight for control of the company. All right, Jared, what are our chances? Hummel now controls 60% of the outstanding shares. Well, then we're lost before we start. Not necessarily. We might be able to win over some of the proxies he now holds. Oh, let's sell and get out. Mother? I wonder what he would say. I'll tell you what he'd say. Well, what are you doing back so soon? I didn't expect to be back so soon. I was chased out by men carrying ropes. They call themselves the Molly Maguires. Did you ever hear the Molly Maguires? Any of you? Those miners have reached the limit of their endurance. The Molly Maguire is one of their secret societies. A violent one. They have the strange notion that it's better to die fighting than wait like sheep. A very strange and unrealistic people. I don't think you'd like them. Funny thing is, they don't hate the company management nearly as much as they hate the Barclays. Get to the point, Heath. Well, now, I was going to tell you what he'd do. Go on. He'd say, sell out. He'd say, wipe your hands of the whole dirty mess. He'd say, take your money and run. What happened up there? You think those men up at Lonesome Camp are striking against Hummel's management? His wage cut? Working conditions in the mine? Oh, you are so wrong. They're striking against him. Heath, I think you'd better explain that. And you explain to me his promises that were never kept. Good housing, safe working conditions. Decent wages, schools for the children, and a company store selling at cost. Security for the old and the injured. What did they get? Leaking roofs. Rotten timbering in the mines. Dirty children playing in the streets and begging pennies. And a company store that charges four prices for everything. Do you know what they eat up there? Potatoes. Potatoes three times a day, seven days a week, and praise the Lord when a miracle puts a bite of meat on their plates once in a blue moon. 
And as for the old and the crippled, oh, they've got it fine and easy. If they have a daughter who works in a saloon to keep the company roof over their heads and enough food from the company store to keep them alive. What he promised them was hope. And what they got was a kick in the teeth. That is why they hate him. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're very young, and the young are very intolerant. You couldn't understand a man like your father. You couldn't understand how a man might make promises in good faith and then be unable to keep them. You only heard one side of the story. Don't pass judgment on a man you never knew until you hear both sides. I've always had faith in my husband, and I still do. But if he was at fault in this instance, then we all are at fault. Your father left us a heritage of wealth and power and land. And he also left us his obligations. Jared? Yes, Mother? Fight Sam Hummel with everything we've got. Bryce, you hold a thousand shares. I want your proxy to vote them. Jared, is the situation that bad? Believe me, it's that bad. We've got to get that mine back in operation. Who else will go along with you? I've got Mayhew and Chase to throw in with me. Now, what do you say? But even with my thousand, you're still way short of control. George, I only know one way to begin. That's to start.
Is this what you wanted, Murdoch? I didn't want murder. You've got to believe me. I didn't want murder. You said the strike would end in three days. That the men couldn't hold out any longer. And every day it went on, he said it was sure to end the next day, and then the next, and then the day after. When the violence broke out, I said, look, Mr. Hummel, let's call a halt to this. Let's sit down with the men and negotiate a settlement. He said nobody had a given right to work in Barclay Sierra, that if they didn't want to work, he'd find men that would. He said that in a way, the strike was a good thing, because it meant he could call in cheap labor, and increase the profits. He said there might be a little trouble, but he didn't say people would be killed. What can I do? What's this? Your proxy signed over to Jared Barkley to vote your 5,000 shares as he pleases. You wanted to know what to do? Sign. You were up at Lonesome Camp. I was. Got a little present for you. Murdoch's proxy. <laughs> this does it, boy. This does it. Looking well, Patty. <laughs> I never felt better. Oh, that rap you got on the head. What are you talking about? My head's the hardest thing I've got. <laughs> well, it was a terrible rap. I knew a man got one like it once. Oh, he was uh, up in a bow, cheerful as a lark for three days. But then on the fourth, he was dead as a mackerel. What are you saying, man? That you're going to die, me boy. You don't mean it. Yes but only for a little while. Who ever heard of a man dying for a little while? You got a plan, O'Doul. What kind of a plan? Well, the cemetery is inside the company fence. You need a burial permit to get past the guards. Need I tell you that a dead man is required for getting such a permit? They say there's going to be a new management and a settlement of the strike. Do you believe it? It's a trick. We're in a war, Patty. A war between the likes of us and the landlords. A dirty landlord's trick. Oh, we're not just fighting the Barclays. We're fighting all the bosses and all the mine owners. Why start anything now when the trouble's almost over? I'm telling you, we need the violence. We need the men in the other camps to know there's such a thing as the Molly Maguires, ready to fight for them against the bosses. What are you going to do? Blow up the works. Oh. oh, that's a grand plan. Then are you with me? Oh, Patty, you'll be a famous man. How long do I have to stay dead? Only a day or two. Will I have a wake? A grand wake. It's the height of my career. I'll be attending my own wake. <laughs> Oh, oh, why did he die? He never ate meat on Friday, nor on any other day, the poor soul. He was pure in his thoughts about women. He never missed the sacraments. He never gave way to sins of lust. Why did he die? Oh, oh why? Why did he die? 
Good evening, Mr. Tolliver. I suppose you've come for the burying permit. Who are you burying? Padre Gohulahan. Himself that was called Paddy the Ghoul. Ah, the poor soul. Sure he never missed a wake if it was within a hundred miles. Check the oh, the shame of it all. A poor man dead. And not let to lie in peace in his own box. I guess it'll be all right. Only the pallbearers passed the gate. Yes. Yes, Mr. Tolliver. Oh. A toast! A toast to Paddy the Ghoul! <laughs> Dying is a terribly thirsty business. <laughs> funeral they'll never forget. Poor Paddy, he went out with a bang. Must be O'Doul. He's up to something. I think they're gonna blow up the mine. Get all the men you can up to the mine. Oh, do. Oh, do. 
Odul! Odul, I want to talk to you. Strike's over. I should have killed you the first time I saw you. Goodbye, Murdoch. And many thanks for your help. Thanks for yours. From now on, we'll run this mine the way Tom Barkley planned it. You do that. Ready? Yes, you're leaving. What do you do now? Going to San Francisco. We from here are. I can make something of myself. Can I help? You already have. And I thank you for it. Brady. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 